Hi everyone, this is Dikshit. Welcome to my channel. In this particular video, I'm going to discuss about Elm Chat interview questions and answers. And I'm going to answer all the questions with best of my knowledge. If you feel there is a better answer, please do comment it. So whoever watches this particular video, it will going to help them. And also, if you don't know what Helm Charts are, I have a separate playlist wherein I've discussed about Elm Chat from basics. I'm going to provide that playlist link in the video's description. And coming to the first question. So I have uh, taken all the basic questions and I've created one question. I'm going to answer so this question part by part. The question is what and why we need Helm Chat? What Elm Chat version you've worked with? And also differences between Helm 3 and Helm 2. So the first part is like, what is Helm Chat? So Helm Chat is a package manager for Kubernetes. So very like by which we can manage our Kubernetes application very easily. And Helm Charts help us in defining, installing, and also upgrading even most complex Kubernetes applications. And also Helm Charts are very easy to create, version, share, and publish. And coming to the version, so most of the people will go with Helm 3 because whatever the cluster which have RABC objects are enabled, that means role, role binding, all these objects are enabled in a certain uh, cluster. So then they will go with Helm. So wherever, in whichever the cluster, they don't have RABC objects not enabled. In that case, they will go with Helm too. And now most of the clusters are like, uh, I mean, in the, whatever the clusters that we have will be definitely RABC objects will be enabled. So that's why most of the people will go for Helm 3. And in simple terms, if you want to say why we need Helm charts. So it is basically, it makes application deployment uh, very easy. So for example, let's say you have one service. If you want to deploy that particular service onto the Kubernetes cluster, assume like you want to create a deployment YML and ingress YML and service YML. With that, assume like you want to create config map and also kind of PDB or like HPA. All these objects you want to create for your, your application to run successfully on KH cluster. So now what happens is like uh, if you take normal Kubernetes manifest file by using kubectl commands, if you try to deploy it. So you need to do it either. Like you need to place all the files in a single directory. You need to run it or each file you can take it by using kubectl commands, you can deploy it. But by using Helm, so with a single command, you'll be able to deploy all these objects and also other advantages. Let's say for example, whatever the config map that you're using, as kind of like a ENV variable, which is defined in config map and referred in deployment. In this case, what happens? You need to first create config map and then only you should create deployment. If you don't uh, follow this order, if you create deployment first, your pods will be failed with saying that config map not found error. So that uh, this is really a problem, thing, right? So that's where like you need to maintain the order. When you are deploying an application, you need to uh, create your objects whatever the Kubernetes objects in an order. So if you're doing, we're using kubectl commands, you need to make sure that this order is followed or else you're gonna end up with some errors. But when you use Helm chart, so you don't need to do anything. So you need to write your manifest files, uh, whatever deployment, ingress, service, config map, PDB, YA, YMLs and HPA YMLs, write those manifest files, keep it under templates directory in the Helm chart. And when you run Helm commands, so Helm chart will maintain, our Helm will take care of that order. So it will gonna first create config map and then it will gonna create deployment. All that order uh, in which order it has to create the Kubernetes object will be taken care by Helm chart. I don't need to worry about it. This is one advantage and also versioning of, versioning of your application deployment. So that is also very, very important thing and very uh, good advantage and uh, uh, most powerful uh, feature of Helm chart. So let's say for example, uh, you have Kubernetes YML files you have created for deployment, service, config map, PDB, HP and all. You have deployed the application in KH cluster. So now it is uh, successfully running and uh, I'm fine with it. And now uh, developers are doing some changes and uh, they said whatever the ports that we were previously using and there, there has to be change in that and also whatever the config, uh, con config maps that we were using. That means uh, configuration that we were using has to be changed and ENV variables, which we defined in deployment YML has to be changed and all. So I'll gonna take that as a DevOps engineer. I'll gonna uh, do the changes in Kubernetes manifest file and reapply. I'm talking about when we don't use uh, Helm chart. So what we used to do is like, we will take manifest file and deploy it by using kubectl. The first deployment is successful. And now the second deploy, 
whatever the changes the development team has asked i have did the changes and i have reapplied so now application uh, is coming up and also all the changes has been deployed and after a certain time so developers started testing it out and also they uh, they saw that there is some issue so it is not a small issue it is a kind of like it takes like two or three days uh, to resolve that particular issue and meanwhile what application team development team is telling us like please roll it back to the previous version in deployment so for basically for pods we have a rollout we can roll it back to the previous version what about service what about uh, whatever the changes that you made to config map so these things won't be rolled back right still uh, these config maps whatever the services that you have it will be still with the same version so i want something like the entire application state has to go for the previous state so for the first uh, whatever the first application my config map whatever the service configurations were there right i want to go for that particular version so in kubectl commands by using kubectl commands you can't do that by using help chat you can completely roll back or upgrade your complete application state so that is one more thing so wherein deployment of our application will be literally easy in helm charts and the next advantage when we go for helm chart is like we can standardize our kubernetes manifest file and also we can make sure that our kubernetes manifest files are usable so let's say for example if you are not going with helm chart and if you are still with like a, a kubernetes manifest files and let's say there is a common application which is used to uh deploy at uh, multiple teams and also in your team itself multiple across multiple environments you want to deploy that particular application so the only change when i deploy it across different teams or when i deploy it across different envs the only change would be the name of application one is name of application another one is namespace of a application so these two attributes only will gonna change so if you don't go with helm chat what you will be doing is so let's say you have a uh, team 1 and you have team 2 so in this case you need to maintain a separate manifest file for team 1 and also a separate manifest file for team 2 so the object definition is same the only is the names of the uh, kubernetes objects are different that's it so in this case you are maintaining uh, uh, like one manifest file for team 1 and one manifest file for team 2 so let's say for example team 3 comes up and they want to uh, deploy the same uh, particular application and their namespace their environment again they will maintain again one more manifest file right so this is kind of uh, not expected because definition is same only the names have changed so then why i am keeping these many manifest file which is kind of a lot of rework because they have to change the names across all the man, uh, objects and the other thing is uh, and also many things are same so why can't i standardize keep it somewhere so uh, when and when when it, uh, when required why can't i change uh, a certain value so if you go with only manifest files this is a problem so when we need to maintain different different manifest files but when we go with helm chat the advantage will be we can keep all our manifest files in templates directly right and after keeping that what we can do is so let's say for example this is my helm chat and i've written all the uh, manifest files under uh, templates directory so once this is done test it out and put it in some re registry where all the teams has access so now the other teams what they can do is they can call this helm chat or they can pull this helm chat and they can have their own values to environment and they can supply it to the helm chat and they can deploy it so by which we can standardize our kubernetes manifest file and also we can make sure that which is reusable across your organization uh, with the different teams or in your team itself across different entities and now we have seen if we use helm chat how we can make application deployment little easier and also we can standardize and also we can make our uh, kubernetes manifest reusable across multiple teams and now the other advantage is it will going to improve the developer productivity so when we want to deploy the same application across different envs and all so rather than e concentrate on changing the manifest files and also let's say for example rolling back or uh, upgrading so you will going to spend a lot of time in changing kubernetes manifest file so especially when you want to roll it back to the previous state of the application then you need to manually change the manifest file and redeploy it so which will go uh, kind of like you are uh, going to the previous state so all these things uh, kind of like it will take little time it's kind of a lot of rework so rather than developers concentrating on these work uh, when we use helm chat you can concentrate more on is, is development work and helm will manage all these kind of rollbacks and updating names or like whatever the 
across different EMVs if you want to deploy uh, the same uh, same application. So it will be easily managed by uh, Helm chart. So that's where like we can get that time and we can use that time uh, with uh, development activities, right? So that's where like it will gonna increase developer productivity. And the other one is reduces deployment complexity. So we have already seen one thing is Helm charts L present version. So application state will be rolled back or upgraded entirely, right? So wherein like one more advantage is, let's say for example, you have, uh, you're working for a uh, team. So they have three environments like dev, env, and also they have QA and also let's assume they have production. Okay, so your uh, application so is ready and you have containerized, you have created Kubernetes manifest file. So let's assume, so we have deployment and we have service YML and also we have config map. So now if these files, deployment, service, whatever the configuration, config maps that we are using, if it doesn't change across three environments, then it is well and good. You can go with Kubernetes manifest file itself. So let's say, assume in deployment, so you have some env variable. So with the name db, db name, db underscore name. So when you have this, so this value will gonna change across dev, qa, prod. So in dev, it might be maybe a test user and in qa, it may be qa test. And uh, in uh, particular production, so maybe let's say assume like it's prod, so some specific user. Let's say prod root is the user in the uh, production name. And also whatever the service uh, ports that you are using, usually per uh, service port won't change across environments. Let's assume like, let's uh, uh, ignore that. Let's say for example, in config map, there will be change across different EMBs. So then what you will be ending up doing. So if you don't use Helm chart, you should have different manifest file for dev. And you need to have different, a different manifest file for uh, QA. And for production also, you should be having a different manifest file and managing uh, manifest file for each environment is not suggested because let's say, for example, definition is same. It's, it's just about the different configuration. So why should I go for different, different manifest files? So it will be really tough because let's assume like uh, they did changes in uh, dev and it is working fine. Then again, manually, they need to see that, like what is the changes that has made in dev manifest file, take that in QA and prod and then deploy it. So rather than doing that, so by using Helm chart, what, what we can do is we can take this deployment service and config map, put it under templates directory of Helm chart and uh, put it across some common uh, repository or a registry. And then whenever you require, you pull that particular chart and you can supply different values dot YML for each envelope. Let's say you can have dev values dot YML. So dev minus values dot YML. And also you can have QA values dot YML. So while running Helm install commands, you can use minus F attribute and you can def send different, different values to them. By this, we can avoid a lot of complexity while deploying our application on different, different EMPs. And also obviously other advantages we have already seen, versioning, we can roll back the complete application state to the previous state. And also if you want to upgrade also, it is very easy. And also we are maintaining the versions. So that is quite important. So these are all the advantages. There are many other, but uh, these are the major advantages of Helm charts. And then next, uh, the differences between Helm 3 and Helm 2. Uh, many people uh, say that like uh, between Helm 2 and Helm 3, only the difference is tiller component. In Helm 2, there was a tiller component and in Helm 3, tiller component has been removed. It's not only this difference, there are many other differences, but this is one of the major difference. In Helm 2, so we used to have uh, one of the component, which is tiller component. So uh, it is, a client server architecture in Helm 2. So wherein like we used to have Helm client and the server side, we used to have tiller pod in the Kubernetes cluster. So wherein like all the versioning and uh, all the information about your releases used to be maintained by this tiller pod. And also uh, installation was little trickier compared to Helm 3. In Helm 3, you can use a small script and also a single command. So by which we can install Helm 3. But in Helm 2, so we should install Helm client as well as tiller pod to be created in Kubernetes cluster. So it was quite tricky also. And renderation, the meta information about your releases, everything uh, used to store in Tiller only. And, but when it comes to uh, Helm 3, uh, so when in like, when Kubernetes uh, started enabling like concepts like RABC concepts, RABC, RABC objects basically, 
role role binding cluster role cluster role binding so then uh, it was not the tiller was no more required so they have removed that now we just need to in helm 3 we just need to use helm client that has to be installed in your server or a machine where you want to learn, run helm chats and then uh, it can render and also it can store the information about uh, your releases everything at the client itself helm client itself and also this chat repository you can push your charts to some central place where it, like it can be hosted on nexus or a gfrog any registry and you can um, uh, put your standardized uh, helm charts there and whichever the team or whichever the developer wants it they can pull it and they can use it for their application deployment and uh, in a simple terms if you want to say so tiller component help in helm 3 has been removed but it was there in helm 2 so wherein like uh, in older kubernetes clusters so there was no rabc objects enabled so that's the reason they had to create uh, altogether new kind of a server in kubernetes cluster itself and then moving on so these are this is one of the major difference and there are many other differences also the other one is three way strategic merge patches this is one of the important difference so in helm 2 so what they used to do is so they used to just check is there any changes in helm chart if there is a, cha a change in helm chart then only those changes will be applied on existing rele releases. Let's say, for example, I've executed this command. This is a command, helm install, and this is a release name, and also this is a chart path. When you execute this command, it will gonna create, or it will gonna deploy our application on Kubernetes cluster. Let's say, for example, when I deployed uh, application using uh, helm chart with, by, by using this command, so the replica count is three. Let's assume uh, the replica count is three. And uh, so it is working fine, well and fine. And after a few days, uh, one, one of the developer who is working on another application, so by mistakenly, he has changed replicas to zero by using kubectl command. And now uh, you, you get to know that like, okay, application is down and also you're getting a lot of alerts uh, saying that application is down and all. So now the replicas has been set to zero. So before like analyzing what, what would have been the problem and all, you want to roll back it to the previous version. So in Helm 2, when you execute Helm rollback and the release name, so what used to happen is, so it doesn't check whether what is the status of Kubernetes objects in the cluster. It doesn't check this. So it will go and only check what is the changes. Is there any changes in Helm chat or not? If there are changes, then only that will be considered. And whatever the changes has been done in uh, your uh, Kubernetes cluster, manually or uh, some third party service, if the, those changes has been done by third party service directly by using kubectl commands, then it won't consider that at all. So that means if, even if like in Helm 2, if I do rollback, even the cluster, uh, whatever the replicas, it will be still zero only. So it won't consider whatever the changes that you make in Kubernetes cluster manually or any uh, third party service uh, do changes uh, directly on Kubernetes cluster. So it will only consider changes in the Helm chart. But in Helm 3, it is quite different. So in Helm 3, uh, basically, let's say, for example, you have deployed uh, the uh, replicas was three and also some uh, engineer or like developer changed it to zero. You can see by using this command. So in this case, when I do rollback in Helm 3, so it will gonna first check what are all the changes? What is the current state of my uh, Kubernetes objects in a cluster? And it will gonna take that as well as the Helm chart changes. So it will gonna consider both and then it will gonna apply all these changes. So in this case, so what happens is, okay, so now the change is, uh, change is made, which is zero, okay? And like uh, in the chart, it is still three. So that means uh, there is a change. So there is a uh, version will be created for this particular change. So that means like when I do rollback, so again, it will go back to the three replicas. So this is three-way strategic merge patch. So in Helm 3, it will gonna consider the current state of objects that you have created by using specific release in the Kubernetes cluster also. To explain this a little more better, so I have uh, one more example. Let's say, for example, you have created a, uh, you, you have deployed an application which has a, a, a container definition like this. So, which has server and also the name of the container is server. And the image that you have used is nginx 2.0.0. And now uh, your team has uh, decided to use uh, uh, Istio as service mesh and they've enabled Istio's sidecar injection. So what has happened uh, for every pod in the cluster, it will gonna add the sidecar container, right? So once this is done, so what's happening is, so uh, my development team said, okay, so now we have new image. So let's take 2.1.0.
and I've did the changes in my uh, templates folder and basically in our, our, my deployment.yml and I reapplied. I have uh, executed Helm upgrade uh, and also the release name and the chart part. So in Helm 2, what happens is whatever the changes that were already there, which has been done by Istio will be ignored because it will going to take only the changes which are there in the chart. It won't consider the present status of a object which is there in Kubernetes. Okay, so this is where like it'll go, it'll directly ignore whatever uh, the manual changes are like third party tool changes. It'll go, it'll gonna ignore. It'll gonna only consider whatever the things which are there in the chart. But in Helm three, that is not the case. It'll gonna consider whatever the changes that you made in uh, uh, your uh, charts as well as whatever the changes which were there are done by manually or like any third party service which are done at the cluster level also. It'll gonna consider both. So that's where Helm 3 has little advantage over a Helm 2. So because it will gonna use three-way strategic merge patches. It will gonna consider the current status of Kubernetes objects on the cluster also and the Helm chart also. But in Helm 2, it is two-way strategic merge patches. It won't consider the present status of the object in Kate's cluster. It will gonna consider only the chart. And then moving on, the other differences are, so release names are now scoped to namespaces. In Helm 2, so when we use some specific release name, let's say, for example, I've used WordPress as uh, my release name. So I have deployed uh, Helm chart in default namespace. OK, so now it is well, it is uh, running fine. And I want to use the same release name in different namespace. Is it possible? No, in Helm 2, it is not possible. Once you have used that release name, so then you can't use reuse that uh, uh, release name in any, if even though if it is a different namespace also, you can't use it. And, but in Helm 3, so release names are scoped to the namespace. So that means whenever, if you want to deploy WordPress, you have used a release name WordPress in default namespace, that is fine. It is scoped only for default. If you want to use same release name in different namespace, is it possible in Helm 3? So that is definitely possible. And also if you want to list all the releases which you have created, in all the namespaces, then you can go with this particular command. So Helm list uh, minus minus uh, all minus namespaces. And um, release names are now scoped to uh, namespaces in Helm. But in Helm 2, so once you use that release name, you can't use it uh, or you can't repeat that release name even if it is different namespace. And then moving on, the next difference is in Helm 3, we have uh, values.json schema file. So when like by using which you can validate your values.yml because in Helm chat values.yml is very, very important. If there, that is not supplied properly, then your Kubernetes deployments are like whatever the objects that you want to deploy, it might go wrong. Let's say for example, so this is a values.yml. There are three attributes. One is name, protocol, and port. And uh, when user supplies port as some string, let's assume they're sending uh, some uh, rather than sending port. So by mistakenly, they're sending application name. So when we take these values, render it, and when you try to deploy it, so that time it will gonna be fail, right? So that's where like at the early stage only. So before like renderation only, I want to identify these kind of issues. And uh, for that, I can basically create this uh, JSON schema. So whenever you execute Helm install or Helm upgrade, Helm lint or Helm template command. So any one of these four commands, when you execute, First, your Helm chart uh, are values.yml, especially uh, not uh, the entire Helm chart. Your values.yml will be validated against this JSON schema uh, file. So here if you can specify, see, this is a field name. So what type of a uh, data you can send it in this field, the string. And also if you could see, there are many, port is there. So what is, you can give a description and what is the minimum. And also you are uh, specifying what is the type also. And also it can accept like uh, one more like protocol you have defined. Here also it is type should be string. If somebody supplies protocol as some integer, so then it will gonna say at the uh, at the early, uh, before deploying only it will say that, okay, you have not followed certain rules uh, are like you have not maintained your values.yml according to the uh, application requirements. So you'll gonna get the error so that you, until unless if you don't do the changes, you won't be able to proceed it. So it's kind of a validation that you are doing on your values. And then moving on, the next is consolidation of requirements.yml into charts.yml. In Helm 2, so we used to define our dependencies. Let's say my uh, particular application is dependent on Postgres. 
first i need to uh, deploy postgres and then i want to deploy my particular application so then we used to define those kind of dependencies in requirements.yml in helm 2 but in helm 3 so they have consolidated in charts.yml so you can define so in charts.yml we'll have meta information about your helm chart like name version app version and many things with that you can also define this dependencies and still like you can use this requirement.yml but in future they'll definitely remove this particular feature so all the things you should define it under charts.yml and then the next difference is in the helm 2 if you don't give so when i use helm install command uh, and also you need to give release name and uh, then you need to uh, uh, supply the helm charts directly right in helm 2 if you don't if you ignore uh, uh, release name even then that is fine it will gonna uh, create a random release name but in helm 3 they have made it as mandatory you need to supply release name if you don't want to supply it so then you can use minus minus generate minus name and also always best practice you should supply the release name so then only you will get to know on what release i have created my kubernetes objects and all and also the next is cli command re renames so to standardize the naming conventions and all so they have uh, renamed few of the commands like helm delete to helm uninstall and helm inspect to helm show and also helm fetch to helm pull so these kind of renaming of the commands has been done so these are the uh, major differences I can see in Helm uh, 3 and Helm 2. So there might be a few more differences, which are uh, small differences might be there. And also the next question is, uh, what are the files and folders in Helm charts? And also give a brief about each file or a folder. So these are the most, uh, most of the common folders, files that you can see in a Helm chart. And we will gonna see, we will gonna use Helm commands and we will gonna see what are all the files that you're gonna create. But uh, so most probably these are the files uh, in many of the uh, Helm charts. These are the files and folders you can see. The first one is, see, this is the uh, folder. So under that, my Helm charts are created. Uh, so Helm chart is there. The, in the Helm chart, the important one is chart.yml. So this is the first file. And wherein we will gonna define the meta information, metadata of our Helm chart. That means name of the Helm chart and what is the version of uh, your Helm chart and also you'll define app version of uh, your application version also you'll be defining in Helm chart. And also in Helm 3, you can also define the dependencies, application dependency. And these two things are optional. Uh, whether you want to have it, you can have it. Or else if you want to ignore it, you can do it. So this is about like just giving information about here a Helm chart, whoever uses it. Like let's say for example, you want to give few instructions for the users, whoever uses the cell chart. So those things you can mention it in readme.md. And coming to values.yml, this is the important file in Helm chart. So wherein like all the uh, values that you want to render it uh, on your manifest files, right? So we will gonna see how to refer the value from values.yml in our uh, templates. We will see that. But in values.yml, in simple terms, if you want to say, all the actual values, all the actual configuration values will be there in this uh, values.yml. And also this values schema.json, uh, just few minutes back we have discussed wherein like this file is to uh, validate whether whatever the values which are supplied in values.yml are proper or not. It's kind of a validation uh, we will do on values.yml before deploying our uh, applications or like services on Kubernetes cluster. And the charts, this directory, so if you want to uh, keep your dependencies, let's say my application is dependent on Postgres and I want to download the Postgres uh, chart and I can place it manually, uh, that is also fine. And let's say I don't want to uh, download it and keep it manually. So then you can mention dependencies in chart.yml. So when you, before doing Elm install, you need to do, uh, there is one more command. So wherein you, you need to execute it. So what that does is Helm. So the command is Elm dependency pull. So when you do that, what it will gonna do is, dependencies will be pulled and it will be placed under this chart directory. So either two ways, one, you can manually download it and place it under the chart uh, directory or like you define it in chart.yml and when you execute Helm dependency pull, it will gonna download the uh, Helm charts, dependent Helm charts, and it will gonna place it under uh, Helm charts directories. And CRD is, if you have any custom resource definition for your Helm charts, you can specify it in CRD's folder. And also the most important directory is uh, templates. So template is the directory wherein we will define all the manifest like Kubernetes manifest files. 
regarding to your application requirement, whatever the Kubernetes object manifest files that you want, you will keep it under this templates folder. And in templates folder, you'll have one more uh, file, which is notes.txt. So in the, uh, this is also very important when your release is successful, let's say I'll use helm install command and my release is successful. So then once the release is successful, so you, you if you want to give some instructions to your users, uh, like let's say saying that, okay, your helm deployment is successful or once the deployment is done, I, I, I want to give uh, out to access my application and all. If you want to print that as an output, once the release is successful, so then you can mention those things in notes.txt. And there will be one more file, which is helpers.tmpl. So then we will gonna, we will define named templates there. So we will going to see that when uh, we get a question on like name templates, I'm going to explain. Uh, so what exactly we are doing by using uh, helpers.tmpl. And then let's move on to the next question. Uh, the next question is command to create a standard Helm chart structure and also command to create a Helm release. So that means if I want to deploy uh, a Helm chart onto the Kubernetes cluster, what is the command? So for this, so I'm going to take kind of like uh, my Helm charts. I'm going to create the Helm charts uh, in my uh, local. So then we will try to deploy it in Kubernetes cluster. So I have already connected to my Kubernetes cluster. So let me do kubectl get pivo. And this is a kube uh, config file. So I, that, uh, that I've placed here. And you can see there is no resources. And also for the safer side, I'm gonna execute helm list. I guess uh, none of the releases have be, has been done. You can see no releases are there. So first part of the question is create a uh, standard chart structure. So that means the command for that is Helm create. See, I'm there in workspace directory uh, in my local machine to create a, a standard structure or a folder structure uh, for a Helm chart. Or let, let's say, for example, you have an application. Uh, before that, like let's say I want to create standard structure for a Helm chart to uh, create. So rather than just creating it manually, so you can use Helm create and uh, the chart name you can give. Let's say, for example, I want to create ngimx. So I can just give uh, helm create nginx what it does is it will gonna create a directory uh, with the name whatever you have provided here and uh, it has created if you could see under this uh, standard directories or files whichever it is required it will gonna create it under this particular directory and also if you see here again like charts directory is there templates directory is there helm ignore so this is the file wherein like uh, uh, we will gonna use so you can specify Files has to be ignored whenever I execute Helm install, Helm upgrade. So whenever I execute it, right? So whatever the files which are mentioned in this particular file will be ignored. It is not in scope of Helm commands at all. And then, so we have chart.yml, if you could see here, uh, so which has API version and also the name of the chart and also a short description about my chart, what it does and also application type. So what is the uh, type of a, a service or a, application that you're trying to deploy by using this Helm chart and also a Helm chart version. And also you have a app version, which is defined. And in, we have values.yml. So we have defined a lot of uh, uh, kind of like uh, image name, other configuration regarding to your Kubernetes manifest file. So we'll gonna come to this point. And other part of the question was a command to create the Helm release. So that means if I want to deploy this particular NGINX on my Kubernetes cluster, what should be the command? So this is also very simple. Uh, the command for that is helm install. And then you need to specify the release name in helm3 that is definitely required. And I'm running with helm3 itself. And um, release name, let's say I'll give my first helm chart. And I need to supply my helm charts path. So in my case, which is ngmx. So when I supply that, so it will gonna take a couple of seconds and then it will gonna deploy all the all manifest files which are related to this particular deployment. And see, whatever which is there in uh, templates directory, there will be something called as note dot, uh, notes.txt, right? So whatever is there in this notes.txt is being displayed here. If you could see the first line itself, uh, first line, so depending on, uh, they've used if else conditions, depending on that, my uh, uh, this particular output also will gonna be. But so whenever deployment is successful, whatever you mention it in notes.txt will be displayed at the commands output. So this is how if you want to create a standard structure, uh, you can use Helm create. And if you want to deploy any 
uh, Helm chart. So then you can go with Helm install and the release name and the path to the Helm chart you need to provide it. Let's move on to the next question. Command to upgrade the release in Helm charts. So let's say, for example, there is a uh, change in your deployment YML. Or like I won't directly do the changes in uh, my deployment.yml, right? So I have to do the changes in uh, values.yml and then I, that will be rendered and will be applied on Kubernetes manifest file. Then it will be taken into action. So let's say whatever the tag, if you could see tag, they're using null, means they're literally not using any proper tag. So let's say, assume like I want to change this particular tag or else uh, let's assume the other values, Let, let's say I want to change this replica count, which is one to uh, replica two. And before uh, this change, uh, before this dip, uh, upgrade, so let us do one thing. So when I do Helm uh, list, so there has to be one release has to be created. So you can see my first Helm is a release which has been already created. And then, so I can do kubectl get all to just see what are all the objects that has been created. And uh, so you can see there is a Kubernetes service and also one pod, which is already up and running. So now uh, my I'm getting too many requests. So my one pod is not able to handle that. I want to create two pods, okay? So in that case, what I need to do is, I just need to change the values.yml. And after that, so I just need to use Elm upgrade. Elm upgrade, and then I need to specify my release name. So what is my release name? My release name is my first, Helm and also the chart directory. So in my case, which is NGNX is my directory name. Under that, I have Helm charts. So when I supply this, it will gonna identify the changes as it is a Helm tree. It will gonna look at uh, the changes which are done directly on Kubernetes cluster and the charts. It will gonna club together and then it will gonna upgrade. And also, if you could see now, kubectl get all. So now you should be able to see two pods. So you can see now two pods are there. So this is how by using Helm upgrade command, you can uh, upgrade your release in Helm chart. And moving on to the next question, how do we refer values.yml, uh, sorry, values from values.yml, uh, quite simple. And for this, like whenever you are writing uh, Helm charts, so for your application, you, you are writing your own customized Helm chart. In that case, I would definitely suggest you to go for these extensions. Uh, this is the Visual Studio uh, code editor that I'm using. So in this, you can install the extensions which are related to Helm. So I can uh, install VS Code Helm, Helm IntelliSense, all these uh, kind of like uh, uh, extensions I can install. And then I can make use of these extensions in my uh, Helm charts very easily. Let's uh, let, let it get installed. And uh, so then I'll gonna sh uh, show you like how exactly it's gonna help us. So now you can see it has been installed. And now when I go back to my Helm charts, and let's say, for example, if I go back to my Helm charts here in deployment.yml, so let's assume I want to take, see this replica account, how I, uh, I'm using it in my templates. So if you want to use this replica account, so uh, when you run Helm commands, there'll be a lot of uh, objects will, will, uh, will, it'll gonna create. So there is something called as objects. So let me explain it that. So when you uh, see, whenever you want to install, so Helm chart will create a lot of objects actually. So values object and also, so it will gonna create a release object. So it will gonna create chart object. So like this, it will gonna create a lot of objects, but one of the important object in Helm chart when you're uh, running Helm install, Helm upgrade. Uh, so those kind of comments is values object. So whatever you have defined in values environment, right? So by using this Helm chart will create a uh, values object. So if you want to refer anything from a values.yml, so in turn, you need to refer values values object. So when you're rendering your Helm template, right? So that's where in deployment is what like we will gonna use this replica, say a replica account. So in deployment, you need to specify like this. Uh, so let me go to replica account. So let me search for that. Yeah, this is what, if I remove it, for example, let's say I'm gonna remove this and I'm gonna add it, okay? So when I type in, so you can see whatever the extensions that I've used because of that, so it is showing, this is kind of an intelligence. It is showing some suggestions. See, these are all the objects that it will gonna create. So when I 
click on dot right it is showing me what are all the objects that it will be available like when i uh, run uh, kind of like a helm install or helm upgrade whatever the commands i'll going to run so at the run time what are all the objects it will going to create is what it is suggesting so in my case it's a values object because i'm want to refer something from values to ml and then again when you click so it will going to show the properties and under that values to ml so in my case i want to take replicas uh, replica count right so i can take this and then again give the space and save it so like this whichever the value let's say for example you want to uh, see what is the value of values auto scaling enabled in this case you can go to values let me open in uh, uh, one more window okay so when i open values dot yml here so you can see here uh, if uh, i want to check what is the value when I, when i render it so what will be the value so in this case you just can go to values dot yml and under that there will be a tag called as auto scaling so let me search for that and under this there is tag which is enabled so which is set to false so we will going to see what why they have set to false and uh, if, what if like if i mention it as to what happens we will going to see that part so this is how like if you want to refer any value so first thing is what is the object that you are using in that object what was the property that you are uh, trying to access is what we will going to do it so in simple terms it's always dot values if you want to refer any value from values dot ml it's dot values and the property name and then moving on and also one more thing i just want to show you so before let's say before deploying your application on any uh, cluster so you want to kind of uh, see that like how my kubernetes manifest files will be rendered before deploying so in that case you can use helm template and also you need to give the release name maybe let let me give release name as test and also the directory where your helm charts are uh, stored so if you give that so you can see that it will be rendered and it will be shown in your uh, command prompt itself if you want to store it in any of the file so then you can let's say for example i want to, to store it in uh, test.yml you can just give this and uh, when when i enter when i click on enter so you can see test.yml has been kind of like created so here you can see rendered manifest file how it looks like uh, the next question is like i need a command if release is already created then it should do upgrade else it has to create a new release so let's say you have a ch helm chart so helm chart is there so when you want to uh, create a release so then what command you'll use helm install helm install is the command you're going to use but if there are any changes in the chart but that particular application has been already deployed by using helm so then what you will do you will going to do helm upgrade right so but so when i go with my ci cd so the one way is like first i need to identify whether it has been already deployed or not uh, so i need to identify if it is deployed so then i need to go for upgrade see if you doing it manually so then you will going to do helm list and you will going to check it but when i when you are doing ci cd so in cd part so before deploying before executing install or upgrade you need to check whether that that has been deployed or not if it is not deployed so then you need to execute helm install if it is already deployed you need to install helm upgrade so for this what you need to do you need kind of a small scripting has to be written so when in like uh, you need to do first helm list and also store the output of that and check uh, by using regular expression check that the release name is there or not if it is there so then tell uh, do helm upgrade if it is not there then do helm install so these kind of things you need to do it right but there is one option in helm chart so by which so it will going to automatically check by helm itself will going to check whether that particular release is there or not if it is there it will going to do install sorry if it is not there it will going to do install if it is there it will going to doing it will going to do helm upgrade so i'll going to show you that particular option so let's run that particular command uh let me run the same part so for that what i'll do is first i'll do helm list so let's delete that particular one and then we will deploy it so helm delete my first helm so i'll going to delete this uh, release so now what i'll do is i'll going to use an option so first what it does is by using when we use that particular option what helm chart does is it'll going to check whether that release is there or not if it is there 
then it will going to upgrade if it is not there then it will be installed so let's do that so helm upgrade the option is like minus minus install when you use this option and let me give a release name let me keep it a simple i am just giving release name as test and also my helm charts directory so when i give this sorry maybe typo you can see the output also the release test does doesn't exist so that's why it is installing it now okay so now when i do kubectl get all there should be two pods because in my uh, uh, values dot yml i have mentioned two replica sets you can see which is already up and running let's say for example now i'll do the change uh, when i do the change uh, of replica count to 1 and then let me save it and then execute the same command so when you are doing a cicd see this particular option plays a very important role so you can avoid a lot of uh, stuff like when in like you don't need to do helm list and then depending on that you don't need to do helm upgrade and install so you can see now so release test has been already upgraded happy helm so that means it has been identified that there is release name already so on top of that it is applying the changes so now when i check kubectl get all so i should be able to see only one particular part so you can see only one pod is there the next question is what are functions in helm chart and what are all the functions that are commonly used in helm chart so now we know how we can refer a value from values dot yml and now my requirement is i want to transfer or i want to manipulate value which is referred from values dot yml so is it possible in helm chart yes it is possible by using functions in helm chart we can do that and also there are many functions in helm chart more than 256 uh, functions are there i'll going to provide a li uh, link in video's description so wherein like you can find the list of functions in helm chart and also we will going to discuss about commonly used functions now so one uh, simple example is let's say for example we have a helm chart and in that uh, we have deployment.yml and uh, a certain env variable is defined in this particular uh, deployment file and if you go see here uh, the username is the uh, env variable and also we are referring a value from values.yml So let me open values dot yml in another window. So if you could see here uh, values dot yml, and let me search for this environment variable. Yeah, you can see here. So this is a value that I am trying to supply. And now my requirement is I don't want uh, this upper case characters. So whatever the user sends, like I want to convert it to lower case, and then I need to render it. Is it possible? Yes, it is possible. As I said, like by using functions, we can do that. So there is a function called as lower, and we can use that. You can see my IntelliSense, but uh, because of that extensions which I have installed, so it is showing me. Uh, you you can use low lower as a function. When I uh, select that and uh, save it, and then when I execute Helm template nginx and test one dot yml, so that means it will gonna render my Kubernetes manifest file and place the output under test one dot yml. So when I press and enter. you can see now rendered and uh, the output will be placed here and uh, so now when i search for env so you can see username the value of the username is like all everything is lower case let's say for example uh, i will send uh, a value in upper case let's say i'll going to send it as so let me save it and again when i execute the command you can see here so even though if you send it everything uh in upper case it will be converted into lower case and it has been when it is rendered it is converted to lower case and it is placed here and like this there are many other functions so if you want to convert it to all the characters to upper case then you can go with upper as your uh, uh, function but now let's discuss about other uh, functions so there is one more function so the, whatever you can see here to yml and also we have seen like include all those things are functions only so we will going to discuss about that but before that so there is one more function which is default so let's discuss about that you can see here this is a pod name uh, attribute right so here i am referring a value from values dot yml if you see uh, when i search for that app name so which is basically commented so let me uncommented and uh, save it and uh, let us render again and if i go to test.yml uh, here if you could see let me search for uh, deployment name so you can see test l whatever i have uh, provided in uh, uh, values.yml so it has been rendered here 
So this is not the pod name. Sorry, I, I mentioned that this is a pod name. So this is deployment name, test dot, uh, test minus help. Let's say, for example, uh, in values.yml, uh, they have, uh, uh, by mistake only, they have uh, commented this particular name. And then now, so if we don't give this particular name, so then it might fail because it might be the mandatory field. And if I don't supply any value for that, so it might fail at the deployment, uh, at the deployment stage, right? So by default, even though if it is supplied or if it is not supplied, so if it is supplied, then I want to take this value. If it is not supplied, so then by default, I want to give some value. So that's where a default function, we can use it. So if you use default function, so if it will going to check whether this value is supplied in values.yml or not. If it is supplied, it will going to take, or else it will going to take this nginx as a value. So let's, uh, uh, let's check out that. So you can see here, app name has been commented now. So when I execute Helm template test, uh, nginx, and I'm redirecting the output to test1.yml. So now when I do that, and when I open test.yml again, so in the deployment name, you can see nginx now. Why? Because I'm not supplying this particular value in values.yml. So if you want to give some default value, uh, even though if it is not supplied in values.yml, so then you can go with uh, default function. And uh, we have one more, so which is required, a function that I've used required function. So if you could see here, uh, whatever, uh, I'm referring a values uh, value from values.yml. So dot uh, value service dot port. So that means the, uh, the port value, I'm taking it from uh, values.yml. Let me search for that in values.yml. You can see here, I'm searching for a service and this value will be replaced when I render it, right? So this is mandatory value, port is, uh, you need to define it in service.yml. So let's say, for example, if somebody ignores this particular value, so then I want uh, I want to let them know that there is a, a value wherein like you definitely need to supply it from the values.yml. So in that case, I can mention, I can use this required function. So that time it will definitely make sure whatever the value you have given you, like you have referred, it should be defined in values.yml. If it is not defined, so that it will throw an error. So let's save it. Uh, if you say I've commented this port value. So now when I do Helm template, it will fail saying that port has to be specified. Whatever the description I have given here, right? It will going to be displayed uh, in the commands output. If I supply it without any issues, it will going to render. So let me uncomment it. And when I save it and render it again, you can see without any issues, it has been rendered and also the port 80 has been replaced here. So this is how if you want to make sure uh, in like a certain uh, particular value has to be definitely provided from values.yml, you can go ahead and can use required function. And like this, we have a few more functions like include. Uh, if you want to uh, use name templates, which is defined in helpers.tml. Let's say, for example, nginx selector labels. So so this selector label, so whatever these two tags are there, right? So which is used at multiple places, then you, what you can do is you can define it at one place and whenever you want, you can call these uh, uh, named templates. So let's say I'll take nginx uh, selector labels. So let me go to my deployment YML and let me search it. So here, when we use include, right? So let me open helper.tmpl here and let me search for that particular value. So you can see here, whenever uh, we call include nginx dot selector labels. So these two uh, YML values like app Kubernetes uh, IO name and also app dot Kubernetes dot IO uh, instance, these two lines will be printed here. Okay, so if you want to, uh, so in simple terms, if you want to say, so if you want to refer a name to templates in your manifest files, so then you'll use include function. And then other, there is one more important function uh, in the same line, if you could see here, n indent. So when you, when you say like uh, Kubernetes manifest file, so indentation is very important. So if you want to give spaces, like let's say, uh, so these lines, let me take this uh, labels. So this is deployment uh, labels, deployment labels. You can see here, I'm calling the name templates and it should be indented properly. If I don't indent it, uh, indent it properly, so what happens is like my, my indentation will be, uh, which is not maintained properly means I won't be able to deploy my Kubernetes manifest files or a Helm chat. 
properly on my uh, Kubernetes cluster, right? So what it does is like whatever the number that you have provided in indent and whatever the number that you have provided. So it will gonna prefix with those many spaces. If you remove this particular one, so what happens is uh, that prefix, the, that indentation uh, won't happen properly. So let me remove this. So you can see this is a deployment labels, right? So let us remove this particular in indent uh, four and then we will see how the output will be. So when I run Helm uh, template test in JNX and test y one YML again. So let me go and open test YML here. And if you could see labels here, see it is not indented properly. So it should it should have been like this, right? Four spaces under the labels it would have been rendered, right? So it is not uh, proper. So that's where like when you use n indent functions, so wherein like it's gonna prefix some of the spaces means adding some spaces at the beginning of the lines. So when I again like Helm template test nginx and when I redirect you to a specific YML file, you can see now it has been uh, indented properly with the four spaces. How many are the numbers that you're gonna provide here? It'll gonna uh, uh, prefix with those many uh, spaces. And then uh, we have uh, include, we have already discussed if you want to call any named template, so we can go for it. And also we have two YML. So now we know wherein like uh, if you want to refer a specific value, so we can use uh, dot uh, values and you can specify the value that you want to use it. So let's say for example, I want to kind of like copy, I want to print, uh, take this YML as it is, and I want to print it in my, I want to place it in my uh, Kubernetes manifest file. In my case, it is in deployment dot file. Is it possible? Yes, it is possible. So two YML, and also, if, let's say, for example, I want to print this particular value uh, somewhere in this uh, uh, under security context. So let us do that. So let me take maybe ingress or like, let, let me go to ingress whether they've used or not, I'm gonna check. So let me open ingress here. And what was the value that uh, ingress? So I'm gonna search for it. And also you can see here, uh, ingress host. So they've used like here also, you can see they've quoted, okay, this is not the best example. So if you want to take this as YML, so in your files, so then we can do it by using two, uh, two YML. So let me do that. Security context is there, right? So let me search whether it has been rendered properly or not. So let, let us search for that. Security context, you can see there is no, there is no security context under this uh, uh, in values.yml also. So that's why it is not able to render anything. Okay, so now what we will do is, we will gonna kind of like uh, uncomment this part. Okay, and I need to remove this particular things. Okay, and then uh, let's say for example, whatever there, this uh, particular thing is there, right? So capabilities. So I want to take as as it is, like onto my Kubernetes uh, manifest files. So is it possible? Yes, it is possible. So after the security context, I want to take capabilities. Like I want to print this value. So let me take that dot capabilities. Okay, so let me save it. And now when I render this Helm template, test.yml. So now when I go to security context and rendered file, So you can see now, so whatever capabilities are not displayed. So you can see uh, drop all. So maybe I what I would have done is like, uh, let us remove this capabilities again. And when I uh, kind of like uh, run template again, now, now you'll be able to see that whole thing, whatever I've defined under uh, security context in values.yml has been taken here. So if you want to take YML as it is from uh, values.yml and if you want to place it, so then you can go for this particular function. And there are many like this, two YML include, so require default. These are the commonly used and indent. So these are the commonly used, but as I said, like there are many functions that we can use in our L chart. I'm gonna provide your reference in video's description. You can go ahead and check it. And then moving on, uh, the next question is, what is the use of pipeline symbol in Helm chart? 
So we can see here. So we have used uh, wherein like if you go here. So I've used values uh, dot uh, dot values dot app name default ng next and also quote. Quote is the function wherein like if you want to place anything uh, like any value. Uh, within double quotes so then you can go ahead and you can use it and here you can see there is a pipeline symbol right so this is very same as like how it works like this pipeline symbol if you have worked on linux or unix so when like when we use this pipeline symbol the output of one function one command will be sent to the next command in linux or unix the same functionality here the output of one uh, particular value like here this value is refer referenced right so this value will be sent to this particular function. Again, after execution of this function, again, the, that value will be sent to this particular function. So then the output of that all, all the function, execution of all these functions will be replaced here. And if you could see here the name, like uh, in the rendered uh, manifest file, if you could see the name is uh, double quoted, right? If I remove this, and uh, when I template it again, you can see here in the deployment name, double quotes are not there. So again, like uh, let's say for example, I'll take back my quote function again. And when I template it, you can see there is a quote. So that's where pipeline symbol in a simple terms, if you want to say, it is used for transferring the output from one function to another. So again, there is no uh, number of pipe symbols that you need to use. So as much as less, if you use, so you can ma uh, render your manifest files a little early, but uh, this is uh, in a simple terms, pipe symbol is used for transferring the data from kind of like a value from one function to other function. Here also, if you could see, I'm printing this, uh, whatever the name templates, which is defined in uh, helpers.tmpl. And then I'm appending or uh, like uh, I'm prefixing a uh, spaces for each line at uh, the four spaces I'm prefix. So that is the use of uh, pipe symbol. The next question is as JSON validation and values.yml, I like to enforce certain rules to be followed by my developers or DevOps engineers who works in a Helm charts. So we have discussed wherein we can have a values.json schema file. So wherein we can apply certain rules, like this is how my values.yml should look. If somebody supplies uh, a va wrong values, so then I can make sure at the templatization or like at the renderation itself, my Helm chart, I can fail and I can inform a certain developer or a DevOps engineer. So likewise, I want to enforce some certain rules also. Whatever the manifest files which are there in my Kubernetes uh, manifest files will be there in under templates folder, right? So on that, I want to enforce certain rules like uh, enabling liveness probe, readiness probe, and whatever the image that you're gonna refer in a container template, you, it should be like specific to a tag. It shouldn't be a latest tag. I want all the developers or DevOps engineer to specify resources block in the container definition. So all these things has to be followed. So can I uh, verify these things? Uh, can, is it possible in Helm chart? Yes, it is possible. So for this, we need to install something called as plugin. So we need to install Helm plugin. So Helm plugin can be, uh, I mean, it, it can be uh, for different users. In my case, uh, so I'm using it for identifying the certain rules. I'm just enforcing certain rules. So wherein like, uh, if you want, if you have any other requirement, if you have a plugin for that, you can definitely use it. So plugin is a fine, kind of a powerful feature for Helm. So you are adding extra capability for your Helm command line tool. So that is what we will gonna do it. So we will gonna uh, install Datri plugin now. So to achieve this particular uh, requirement, we need to go with uh, Datri's uh, plugin. So for that, I'm going to refer Datri's documentation and their documentation is pretty good. And um, if you want to visit their GitHub repository, you can click here. And also I'll provide a GitHub repository uh, link. So you can go through and you can get more information and you can re read more, more about it. And then if I go back to Datri's uh, documentation, so you can click on docs. So wherein like you'll get more uh, kind of like how the integration has been done with like uh, Helm. And also if you're going with any other uh, CACD tools like GitHub uh, Actions and like GitLab, Jenkins, you can integrate uh, at the CI level itself so that you can identify at the beginning of development life cycle itself. And you can make sure if anything went wrong, so then you can inform developers at the early stages only, rather than identifying at the deployment stage and like, uh, then it'll be a lot of rework. Again, you need to do the changes, uh, rise the PR, get it verified, and also run the CI again. It'll be a lot of rework. So that's where, like, if you identify at the early stages, 
it will be really helpful and then here so i need to use it with helm right you can go and you can click on helm plugin here and then so i if i want to install that particular plugin then i need to go with this particular command helm plugin install and the uh, repository link if you could see here so let me go and uh, copy this command and also so rather than executing uh, installing these uh, plugins in my windows machine so i have a linux machine so which is already configured uh, with uh, helm and also i have installed this particular plugin already uh, so we will what we will do is we will going to execute the next command so helm dot test and also i need to supply my helm charts directory so let me do that helm dot test and also i need to supply my helm chart directory i'm already inside my helm chart so i'll gonna uh, supply as dot so that means it will gonna supply whatever there in the present directory my now helm charts will be verified against dot rules you can see i'm violating three rules one is uh, each container like whatever the helm chart that i have so i have not defined liveness probe and also you can see readiness probe is also not defined and also to ensure i availability this is one of the best practice right wherein like my replica count should be more than one so these three rules i am violating and also if you want to see what are all the rules which are enabled against which rules i am validating so you can click on this url so when you click on this so it will be redirected to datrice dashboard first time if you are logging in so it will going to ask you for you can log in with your github username password and then um, see this is the dashboard so wherein like you can enable disable according to your requirement and also you can read more about it certain rule will do so if you want to mo read more about it you can click on this particular symbol and you will be able to uh, read more about that particular rule what it is uh, why it is there and then if you want to let's say for example i want to change this uh, whatever the error message when i kind of like execute this particular uh, helm dot test uh, and uh, helm chart supply when i do that right so whatever the error message that you are seeing here if you want to change that so you can do that also you can edit it and you can submit so that like uh, whenever you execute it for the next time so that particular error message you're going to see and also we have history tab so whenever you have connected with your directory da dashboard this dashboard so it's going to show in history so when you have ran and also uh, so what is the, the status of it you can see uh, so this is the exit uh, exit status zero so that means i am not pausing the policy you can see it so all the histories if you have connected this dashboard with uh, uh, like many other systems like cacd uh, pipelines and also with other machines all uh, runs you can see at one place so this is uh, at the history page and also you can see good thing about datri is like uh, it is doing yml validation and also schema validation schema validation as in like in your manifest files let's say for example the selector is there right so rather than uh, defining the selector with all lower cases so it's it happens wherein like sometimes you might uh, by mistake and you would have defined uh, this lower case s with like upper case s so this is kubernetes uh, schema is not correct when you deploy it when you try to deploy it it says like uh, this field not found so that's where so rather than before deployment itself if you identify this schema uh, related issues also it will be really helpful and also you can do the schema validation with the different kubernetes versions also so now if you see i am taking uh, 1.18 schema uh, kubernetes schema and against that i am validating my health charts if you want to change that you can go to your settings and then you can change here you can see here default server version you can change it whichever the schema version you want to verify against so if you want to verify against a, a schema version 1.21.3 so then you can select it and then you can run against that so uh, and also if you want to read more about it you can definitely refer uh, their documentation docs part and they've recently announced the custom rules so you can read more about uh, that moving on uh, the next question can we deploy a same helm chart across multiple uh, envs environments is it possible yes it is possible so let us go and let's do that so let me close all these files let's say for example uh, in my project so when i want to uh, for deploying multiple uh, environments i have different different name spaces if i want to deploy as a dev candidate i uh, means if i want to deploy it in uh, development environment so in that case let's say i have dev env uh, dev namespace under that i want to deploy my uh, helm chart and also if i want to take it to qa so then i want to take a qa uh, namespace and i want to deploy it under qa namespace so is it possible to deploy same helm chart with the same release name in different namespaces 
it is possible because in helm 3 when we discussed about differences so our release names are scope 2 namespaces and also if i want to supply different values let's say for example in values.yml uh, for dev uh, uh, environment i want to create only one replica so for uh, qa envi environment i want to uh, specify so when in like uh, replica count as uh, 2 and also I want to supply uh, the repository and whatever the image is there, right? I want to supply different image. So maybe we just tested the previous image. This is a late, latest image. So we're in like, which should be de deployed to dev and uh, the previous image. So which, which has to be deployed uh, to the QA. So is it possible uh, with the same help chat? Yes, it is possible. You can have uh, multiple values dot viable. So what we will do is let's replace uh, uh, the name like uh, let's change the name of this values.yml. So I'll just keep this values uh, values.yml with a dev values.yml. Okay, and uh, I'm gonna create one more. So let me copy and uh, I'm gonna rename this uh, particular file with QA YML. And then you can see now I have two values.yml's and in QA YML, I'm gonna create uh, kind of two replicas and also uh, here, uh, rather than giving engineers la a latest image, I'm going to provide a different image tag. So let me search for that. So let me go to hub.docker.com and then let's search for nginx. So let me take uh, any other tag other than this latest. So let me take this uh, maybe. now so after this so what i need to do is so let me uh, see whether i've connected to my kubernetes cluster or not so kubectl get po so nothing is there in default namespace and also i've connected to my kubernetes cluster so first what we will do we will create namespaces uh, i'll create dev and also i'll create uh, qa namespace also so let me create qa okay so now by using this values dev values dot yml, we will gonna deploy same help chart onto the dev namespace, and the same help chart by using qa values dot yml in qa namespace. See, this is about reusability. This is where reusability and standardization come into picture. You are not changing anything in your templates or manifest files. You are just changing your values dot yml so card into your environments. So this is where we are reusing help chart. Uh, so in multiple places. So if you want to deploy that. So let's say Helm install and I need to provide a release name. So let's say dev, I'll say dev Helm and also uh, I need to supply uh, which namespace I want to deploy. So let's say minus N and also I'll supply it as dev. And then, so I need to supply my Helm chart directory. So which is in my case, ng index and also uh, so this is all like, I just want to supply these parameters when I do that. So you can see here null pointer error. So here, if you put C, right, uh, the main thing is I forgot to supply values. .yml. It is by default, it is searching for uh, uh, dot uh, values. .yml. So in my case, I don't have any values. .yml, right. So I've changed, uh, renamed my values. .yml with uh, different uh, dev and QA values. .yml, right. So that's where it is not able to find that value. And that is where like it, for, for the first file itself, while rendering the first file itself, it is throwing an error. And uh, now, so if you want to supply a certain values.yml, so then I can use minus F. And then in my case, this is a dev, right? So let me supply. So I need to say nginx. And also I'll supply a dev values.yml and also again i'm going to supply my uh, uh, helm charts directly so when i do this so it shouldn't fail with this error anymore so by default if you it will helm will gonna search if you don't supply this minus f right it will gonna search values.yml is there or not so now you can see it has been deployed and also when i do kubectl get all minus n dev so in the dev namespace i'm just checking out it should be one pod with a, um, it is going to crash loop back error. I'm not sure about it, but you can see one pod has been created. And now, so the same Helm chart, we will try to deploy it. So only change that you need to do is, you need to supply QA values .yml, And also uh, you need to supply different namespace. 
queue. So when I do that, so it will gonna deploy my Helm Charter to the QA namespace with the same release name. See, I, I'm using the same release name. And also when I do kubectl get all minus n QA, you should be able to see our two pods which will be up and running. And also the image should be uh, a, a slight difference wherein like uh, I've used different tag. So this is how if you want to deploy your Helm chart, you want to reuse across multiple uh, environments or multiple teams, you can just change the values to uh, You can, other things will be same as, as it is. So moving on, uh, the next question is, is it possible to ignore a specific object, Kubernetes objects? when we are deploy, uh, deploying onto diff uh, different uh, uh, environments, depending on the environment. Yes, we can do that. Uh, here itself, we can have dev and QA, right? In dev, let's say for example, uh, so in ingress, ingress is there, right? So this, I want to disable it for uh, dev uh, environment and I want to enable this in QA environment. You can see here, they have some condition loops, like if, if condition. So it will gonna check, uh, whether the values dot ingress is enabled this particular value let me open my values dot yaml so let me open dev values dot yaml so let me go for this particular value here and here so if it is enabled or not if it is enabled so then what it does is uh, so if it is false right so this one is completely ignored so when i render it also let's say for example elm template and also let me give some release name and minus F. So I need to give NGNX and also dev. And also I'll give my uh, Helm search directory and I'll redirect the output to test do not work. Okay, when I go with this rendered file. So here, if you see ingress is not there. Ingress object type ingress is not there. See, let me search on a kind. So ingress is not there. Why? Because I'm doing a, some condition uh, loop here, wherein like I'm just checking this value. If it is false, then let's not take this. If it is true, so let, let me make uh, the, in the QA file, right? QA values.yml, ingress as true. So let me search for ingress. So I'll make this enabled as true. So then uh, let's check it out. So then in this case, so when I render it, so let me supply then QA values.yml. So I put it in, test two ml so now if you could see ingress is considered so you can see ingress has been created so this is how depending on uh, environments if you want to take enable some kubernetes uh, objects or like kubernetes manifest files by using these conditions by specifying these values like uh, false or true in values.yml we can enable disable certain objects in health charts so that is possible and which is uh, uh, definitely one of the most useful case also so wherein like depending on en environments, if you want to enable and disable, I can do that. Because ingress doesn't make any sense in dev environment because my developers still can use any other uh, service type like a uh, node port or like uh, they can use uh, any other services, they can access the application. But when I'm giving for testing QA en environments, I, I can't ask my QA engineers to uh, access with uh, uh, node port service. I can give them uh, ingress and by that they can uh, access the application. So that's why depending on the environments, you can uh, ignore uh, specific uh, objects that is possible. And so the next question is, we need to standardize labels of all the manifest files inside the template folder. Is it possible? Yes, it is possible. And if you want to change any label, need to update at one place, it should be applied in all the manifest files. So for this, it's very simple. So we need to go with uh, helper helpers.tmpl. In all the manifest files, if you see uh, the labels of all the manifest files, so which is nginx labels in hpa you can see here ingress service everywhere it will be nginx labels only so if you want to add any uh, label extra label so rather than going into each manifest file updating in each manifest file so you can go to helpers.tmpl and you can go here nginx labels and you can define here so let's say uh, i want to define app name okay so app name as uh, nginx web i'll gonna define it okay so now when we render it so let me do renderation so rather than dev i'll gonna supply qa so when i do this and also rather than install i'll do template 
So when I do this, okay, so it'll gonna print on the screen itself. But let, let us store this in uh, one of the test dot three dot yml. So when I do this, so in a file it will be stored. You can see here whatever the uh, extra uh, label that I've added in all the manifest files. This is service account. You can see in the service has been added and also in the deployment. So this is where like you can de define one name template. And if you want to use it across other uh, name template, uh, other places, you can go ahead and you can do that. So this is kind of a, a lot of duplication is not there in my health chat. I'm defining at one place and I'm referring it in many places. Command to uninstall a specific release. We have already discussed, I've already executed it. So it is very simple. First we will do helm list and we will get the release name and then we will do helm uninstall and then dev minus helm. So by which we can uninstall a specific uh, release in helm chat. And then moving on, the next question is, is it possible to create the namespace using Helm commands only? So while installing the chart. Yes, so if you remember, we had created a namespace and then we uh, deployed it. But let's say uh, while uh, executing Helm commands itself, I need to create the namespace and then I need to deploy it onto the special, that particular uh, namespace. Is it possible? Yes, it is possible. First, we will gonna check what are all the namespaces which are there in my Kubernetes cluster. You can see uh, there are these many uh, namespaces are there. So now what we will do is, so I'm gonna go with helm install command. So helm install command and dev values.yml only I'll go with. And uh, let's say for example, I want to deploy this to a namespace uh, called as uh, dev test or like uh, dev helm is the namespace name. So that particular namespace I want to deploy it. And also which is not there. So if I do this, it will fail saying that a specific namespace is not found because in Helm 3, so the namespace has to be created and then only it will try to deploy it on that. So let's say for example, I don't want to create it in uh, namespaces like uh, by using kubectl commands. I want to create it on the fly. So whenever I execute Helm commands, so then we can use uh, create namespace option, create minus namespace. So when I use this, so it will gonna create the namespace and that my particular will uh, release will be released. So you can see now. So when I do kubectl get ns, the namespace will be created. Uh, here you can see dev helm under this kubectl get all minus n and uh, dev helm is the namespace that I've created. So when I give this under this, my release would have been already created. And also helm list also you can do that helm list minus n and dev minus helm. You can do it. So you will gonna see the releases under this button. And if you want to see all the releases under all uh, kind of like namespaces, then helm list minus minus all namespaces. I guess namespace typo. So it will gonna connect with your Kubernetes cluster and you can see in all the places, in all the, uh, whatever the namespaces that we have. So what are all the releases it will show. So now let's move on to the next question. Okay, the questions are done for that, uh, this particular video. And I'm gonna come up with a new set of questions and I'm gonna do a separate video uh, to just to avoid uh, video length. And also if you have liked the video and if it is useful, please like, share and subscribe. Thank you, have a good day.